What's up, Pharmacy Nation? I am Pharmacy Joe. Thank you for being a listener of the Elective Rotation, a critical care and hospital pharmacy podcast. This is episode 558. In this episode, I'll discuss the use of haloperidol versus ondansetron for cannabis hyperemesis syndrome. I have all the evidence supporting today's show linked up in the show notes at pharmacyjoe.com slash episode 558. The mechanism behind cannabis hyperemesis syndrome is unknown. It is a rarely occurring syndrome that seems to be associated with daily cannabis use for at least one year. It's a diagnosis of exclusion, and it's characterized by severe cycles of protracted vomiting. Evidence to date suggests that the syndrome is resistant to traditional antiemetics and goes away eventually after cessation of cannabis use. Due to case reports that suggest that haloperidol was an effective treatment, a group of investigators in Ontario, Canada carried out a randomized controlled trial comparing haloperidol to undansetron for cannabis hyperemesis syndrome. Cannabis users with active emesis were randomized in triple-blind fashion to one of three groups. Number one, low-dose haloperidol, 0.05 mg per kilo IV, high-dose haloperidol, 0.1 mg per kilo IV, or on Dancitron, 8 mg IV. 13 patients received haloperidol, and 17 patients received on Dancitron. The primary outcome was the reduction from baseline in abdominal pain and nausea, each measured on a 10 centimeter visual analog scale at two hours after treatment. There were also several secondary outcomes. Both doses of haloperidol were superior to ondansetron with significant improvements in pain, nausea, reduced use of antiemetics, and less time spent in the ED. The differences favoring haloperidol were also clinically significant, with the changes from baseline more than double ondansetron's, half the need for rescue antiemetics, and one-third shorter ED stay, saving two and a half hours of time in the ED per patient. Two patients in the high-dose haloperidol group did return to the ED for acute dystonia, which was easily treated. This trial had difficulties with enrollment and was halted early for benefit. Stopping a trial early for benefit may overstate the treatment effect, as discussed back in episode 456. And to get to the show notes for that episode, go to pharmacyjoe.com slash episode 456. However, this does represent the best available information on treatment of this rare syndrome. If haloperidol is used, a lower dose of 0.05 mg per kilo IV makes the most sense as it was effective without causing dystonia in this small sample of patients. To access my free download area with 20 different resources to help you in your practice, go to pharmacyjoe.com slash free. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you in the next episode of the Elective Rotation. Thank you.